Hi, and welcome to our second episode of Sacred Energy Pathways to Spiritual Enlightenment. I'm Kimberly. I'm your host. I am an energy practitioner and spiritual life coach at the Awakening Tulip LLC. And last week I introduced what earth-based spirituality is, at least in my, my beliefs. This week I would like to talk about the core principles of earth-based spirituality. Another way of saying earth-based spirituality, you'll find some people call it nature-based, earth-based. It's the same, it's just a different wording. Both are equal. Uh, I tend to say earth-based spirituality, it's just my personal preference. But a core principle is the belief that all living beings and the earth itself are interconnected. We form an energetic web. All living beings on the earth and the earth itself are interconnected this means that the humans animals plants and even the inanimate that's a hard word for me <laughs> elements like rocks and water are connected through this energetic web this web has a flow of energy that links all life each action we take will have a ripple effect on the whole system. So <laughs> you've all heard of the butterfly effect. If the butterfly flaps its wings, you know, somewhere in the world, a hurricane hits. You know, there's also a movie with uh, Ash, I don't remember who it is, but there's a movie called The Butterfly Effect that shows that how even little changes can have profound effects. And that is a key component that is good demonstration of a key component of earth-based spirituality in that this flow of energy that links all of life can be affected by each action we take and this ripple effect can have positive and not so positive effects i don't particularly like the word negative but i'm not i haven't found a good alternative words <laughs> non-desirable effects maybe okay so as part of earth-based spirituality we recognize that the earth itself is a living breathing entity it's not just a backdrop for human existence within that we also say that the natural elements such as wind water soil carry an energy that interacts with our own. This encourages a deep respect for all forms of life. And we know that harm done to any aspect of nature can affect the balance of the entire energetic web. So we acknowledge this interconnectedness. And it helps us cultivate a greater awareness of how we interconnect with the world around us. So we recognize, yeah, we're all interconnected. Everything we do can affect everybody else. So we try, at least, I mean, come on, we're human, not always quite accomplished, to make sure that our actions have a positive effect on this energetic web and that we can bring ourselves back into center and have a more positive effect on this energetic web so we live mindfully so that we know our actions have a positive effect and not a negative effect okay so <laughs> Excuse me. Um, when we're talking about the energetic web, we we recognize that when it is in harmony, individuals experience a sense of inner peace and spiritual alignment. This comes from living with nature cycles, respecting the interconnectedness of life, and understanding that our own thoughts, emotions, 
and actions can influence this energy around us. So we live mindfully within this web. And when we do that, we can feel grounded, supported, and connected to a higher purpose. So we try and remain mindful of how we interact with each other. Anger, fear, frustration versus happy love. Yeah. <laughs> so that is something we need as earth-based spiritualists, spiritualists that we try and keep in mind. Because disruptions to this energetic web, whether it's through our personal actions, uh, negative environmental influences, or emotional stress, can lead to imbalances in our nature. Uh, I have recently been very stressed because my contract's ending soon, and I didn't have a offer let excuse me an offer letter from the new company. So I'm stressed, just like why am I not getting my offer letter? What am I supposed to do? And this stress did affect others around me. It affected my baby girl, my Chihuahua. That's her name, baby girl. And that she became a little more clingy. She's emotionally supporting me. She's sitting in my lap more and everything else. So my stress negatively impacted my dog. And that's what I'm talking about when we're talking about how we can affect this energetic web that's around us. So another example of negatively impacting our undesirable effects to the energetic web it's staying indoors too long we all hear um spring fever this is part of it when we stay inside too long without connecting to nature it leaves us feeling ungrounded with conflicts and relationships that may disrupt our energetic emotional energy flow so you know that's why they say you know you need to get outside <laughs> it's more than just vitamin d which is great being out in nature in the snow and the rain and whatever helps us stay connected to this energetic web that we have all around us we restore the earth-based spirit <laughs> we restore as earth-based spiritualists our connection to this energetic web by grounding meditating and spending time in nature uh, it helps us realign with me, Earth's energy. It's really a great feeling, too. We consciously interact with this energetic web. And when we do that, we can heal emotional wounds, clear mental clutter, enhance our overall sense of well-being. And I find this is really important during the holidays. The holidays start actually around Samhain or Halloween. With a lot of parties, what decorating, you have to get candy, you have to do all this stuff, and your mind starts going and going and going, and you end up feeling like you're flying off a handle. Well, spending time in nature, taking a walk in the woods, all of this can help settle because you're no longer focusing on the, the little hamster wheel in your head. You're able to stop and look around your flowers that are out there. Um, yeah, all this other stuff, you know, the animals, the squirrels, whatever you have, because we actually have pretty mild winters here lately. <laughs> all of this helps me reconnect to the energetic web around me and helps center me, helps ground me. It's really great. So this healing force, it brings us back into harmonies, but with both ourselves and with the world around us. as humans here uh we have energy exchanges with humans other humans our husbands our wives our friends we have people you see on the street if you ever want to see a great example of this energy exchange we have with other humans when you see somebody walking down the street or walking past you in the parking lot just smile and say hello and you'll see them smile they're, they'll get a little happier uh, because we and we've interacted with them. We gave them positive energy. And it's really a great feeling, even if you don't consciously think about it or they don't think. But often if they, it affects them whether you see it or not. It is there. 
So and back to my point here. Uh, the energy exchange between humans, nature, and animals, it's a key component to maintaining harmony within the interconnected web of Earth-based spirituality. This exchange itself is based on the belief that everything in nature, in the na natural world, is infused with energy. And we are constantly interacting with this energy on multiple levels. We have energy from the nature, the trees, the plants, the mountains, the rivers, the earth herself. It radiates this energy that has a grounding and healing effect on us. When we spend time in nature, we absorb its calming, stabilizing energy, which helps us feel centered and balanced. So practices like walking barefoot on the earth, which is also known as earthing or grounding, allows us to directly connect with the earth's energy. It helps us release our negative energy and to restore a balance within ourselves. So it's really great when we can do that. We also find that animals are part of this energetic web. Their natural instincts and their energy can teach us valuable lessons about presence and intuition and harmony. For example, if you observe an animal in their natural environment, they can inspire you to connect or reconnect with your inner rhythms and instincts. If we watch our pets especially, we find you know they offer an emotional exchange of energy that provides comfort, companionship, and healing. Now, as I stated earlier, humans are an active participant in this exchange. Our thoughts, emotions, and actions release energy into the environment, affecting both nature and creatures around us. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Positive energy, such as love, gratitude, compassion, contributes to harmony, while negative energy or undesirable energy like anger or fear or frustration it can disrupt this energy web so we need to maintain a mindfulness of our energy and how it interacts with nature and animals so we can consciously contribute to maintaining balance in this energetic web so we maintain harmony with in this energetic web and when we do that it reminds us that we are not separate from the natural world we are part of the natural world by treating nature and animals with respect we contribute to the overall balance of energy and in return nature and the animals help us heal ground and can restore us when we need it so the flow of energy is a two-way street and maintaining the harmony requires a conscious effort to give and receive energy in a way that is respectful of the balance of life. So it is part of mindfulness. So I've, I've, I've stated it several times, the earth itself is considered sacred in earth-based spirituality. Uh, we have a belief that the earth is not just a resource to be used, but a living, breathing entity that deserves reverence and respect. So the earth is seen as a source of life, energy, wisdom. And by honoring it, we align ourselves with its natural rhythms and energy. So, Think of Gaia. Gaia is Mother Earth and is considered a divine presence. So this view itself emphasizes that the Earth nurtures and sustains all forms of life, providing elements that we need to survive. So we have air, water, food, shelter, <laughs> uh, the land, mountains, the rivers, the forests, and oceans, all imbued with spiritual significance and this re represents the earth's ability to heal ground and to guide us 
we find that there are many ways to honor the earth. And honoring the earth means taking care of it and seeing it with reverence, recognizing that it is not an inexhaustible resource, but it's a fragile ecosystem that requires balance. Here, I'm going to give you a few reasons why honoring the earth is essential to spiritual practice. In honoring the earth, it gives us a spiritual connection. When we see the earth as sacred, we deepen our spiritual connection to earth. We become more mindful of our relationship with the planet and how our, our actions and our, how our actions affect Mother Earth. So this connection can bring a sense of peace and grounding as we align with Earth's natural energy. I also find that many cultures and spiritual practices incorporate rituals that honor the Earth. Uh, we offer sacrifices to rivers. We celebrate the solstices. We plant trees, Arbor Day. <laughs> All of these acts of reverence acknowledge that the earth has life-giving power. And it creates a sense of gratitude for all that the earth provides to us. One thing we find that when we honor the earth, when we contribute to restoring its balance, the earth supports us by healing and providing energy that revitalizes us on spiritually, <laughs> revitalizes us spiritually and physically. So, you know, it grounds us, it makes us more centered, it gives us a sense of peace. All of this is stuff we get when we honor the earth. We have many ways, many forms that we can use to honor the earth in everyday life. And through spiritual practices as well, we have making echo conscious choices in our daily lives, such as reducing waste, conserving water, uh, and supporting sustainable agriculture. I always think of this when, um, now if I can think of it, we don't use pesticides. We get organic. That's the word I was looking for. We use more organic products. So we're not using chemicals and putting them in the earth. Uh, we have rituals that we can do that celebrate the earth. We have gratitude rituals, gratitude ceremonies. We can meditate outdoors. We can offer flowers and herbs to the land. All of this is, a is our nature rituals that we can use to celebrate the earth, to return energy to the earth. One thing we need to do is be aware of how we use natural resources uh, so that we ensure we take only what we need and give back to the earth through restorative efforts like planting trees, habitat conservation, and pollution reduction. So all of this is a way of honoring the earth and the earth. Honoring the earth is very important. It, reaffirms the belief that all life is interconnected, that our well-being is linked to the health of the planet. And when we honor Earth, we honor ourselves. So this act of respect helps cultivate a deeper understanding of sacredness of life, and it fosters a sense of responsibility to protect and nurture the environment for future generations. Through this spiritual relationship, we learn to live in harmony with the natural world, ensuring that we tread lightly and contribute positively to the Earth's ongoing cycle of life. We talk a lot about sustainable living nowadays. We all heard it. Making echo conscious choices, mindful living. All these are principles of respecting the planet and earth-based spirituality. These practices reflect an awareness that our actions impact the earth, its ecosystem, and they embody a commitment to living in harmony with the earth. And 
you know, these aren't just buzzwords, you know, <laughs> sustainable living involves making choices that reduce our environmental footprint, ensure that we are not depleting the Earth's resources faster than they can regenerate. This can include reducing waste. So if we use less plastic, we recycle, composting, all of this minimizes what ends up in the landfills. We can also, you know, conserve energy using renewable energy sources such as solar or wind power and being mindful of our energy cons consumption are all ways of conserving energy. And this is a way we live sustainable. You know, we also have uh, supporting sustainable agriculture, choosing organically, locally grown, and seasonal foods to reduce the carbon footprint of food, food production. So sustainable living reflects a deep respect for the earth by prioritizing its health and longevity over the short-term convenience of consumption. When I say eco-consciousness, what I mean is that we are aware of the environmental impact of our daily choices, and we make decisions that protect the planet. Some examples I have of eco-consciousness is using eco-friendly products opting for biodegradable natural cleaning products and avoiding toxic chemicals that can harm the environment. I have, and I, I wish I remembered the uh, company that supplied them. Uh, my laundry detergent it, are those flat sheets that you just throw in and they melt. I have no plastic in them. They're a little cardboard. I can just recycle cardboard. It's really great. It also takes up a lot less room. <laughs> so that is one of my choices I make for being eco-friendly. So we also have um, oh, another way of eco-living is reducing our water usage. You can install water-saving devices and be mindful of water waste in everyday activities, leaving the water running when you're brushing your teeth. Uh, taking a bath instead of a shower. A shower actually takes less water than a bath. That being said, every once in a while, we all love the bath. That's a balance. You don't want to go militant on one side or too lax on the other. You know, a, a nice, happy middle ground <laughs> is really great. And in different aspects, I mean, one day you're going to be better at it than not. All of that's good. Okay. What we don't often think about as eco-friendly is clothing. Buying clothing made from organic materials that support ethical brands and reduce clothing waste by reusing and recycling clothes. Um, these small, thoughtful actions collectively help protect the ecosystem that cause harm to the planet. So, when we live mindfully, it really goes beyond specific actions, and it reflects on a deeper spiritual connection to the Earth. It involves being fully present in how we interact with the planet, and appreciating this interconnectedness of life. And we can do this by spending time in nature, regularly connecting with the natural world, whether we're walking through a forest, meditating by the ocean, simply sitting outside. It helps foster this sense of unity with the earth. Expressing gratitude for our natural resources. So if we're acknowledging the gifts the earth gives us, clean air, fresh water, nourishing food, and we express this with a sense of gratitude, it encourages respect and responsibility for these resources. Another thing we can do, we can slow down. If we reduce the consumption and live more simply, it helps us align to the rhythms of nature, which often makes 
which is often more slower than the fast paced human world. One thing, I mean, seriously, how connected are we? I'm sitting here recording on a computer. I have an iPad, I actually have three computers to work and my personal iPad, uh, personal laptop, I have iPad, my cell phone, my micro. We're very connected to our electronics, not so much connected to the earth, to other people. And all of this helps separate us from this energetic web we have. So that's part of what we're talking about when we're talking about spiritual living, <laughs> I guess. Um, but when we reflect respect for the planet, when we live sustainably, when we make echo conscious choices and practice mindfulness, we are honoring the earth as a sacred entity. By these actions, we are more than just environmentalist. We are spiritual, pra the, these are our spiritual practices that align us and are a key to maintaining harmony with the planet and recognizing our role as stewards of the earth, ensuring its well being for future generations. Part of spiritual earth based spirituality we reflected on it when we we're talking about um interconnectedness the web is we have a secular i can't speak that word but secular wisdom um with the natural cycles of earth we have the seasons we have the moon phases we have the tides and these all guide our personal growth When you think about it, you have the moon, which has four phases. We have the new moon, the waxing moon, the full moon, the waning moon, and then back to the new moon. The new moon is the start of things. You're growing. Then you have the waxing moon. It's growing. It's time of when you gather. Full moon, you know, you start seeing the fruits of what you did. And then you have the waning moon when things decrease. If you want to stop something, waning moon is a great time. When you want something to grow, the waxing moon is a great time. Uh, the seasons, you have spring, summer, winter, fall. Spring, everything's new, it's coming new, it's growing summer it's full blast i mean come on the heat the activities everyone wants to be outside in the sun swimming whatever fall and you start seeing when things go dormant start relaxing slowing down and winter is a time of rest yeah you know, so we have the earth going through the moon cycles through the seasonal cycles all of this is reflective of our lives and it's part of earth-based spirituality we have several rituals we have espits for the new and full moon a lot of people celebrate those uh, we have holidays uh, which are the solstices um, yule christmas Othara, easter so we have all these celebrations where we celebrate the cycles of the earth and this helps us realign with nature cycles. So if we celebrate the solstice or the new moon, it helps us set our intentions. It helps us bring us in line with the earth and these more earth-based cycles into this energetic web. So as earth-based spiritualist, spiritualist, this interconnected is very important. It has a respect for nature. It shows the secular wisdom of the earth and how things always follow in a circle. Life, so you have birth, you're growing, and you die. Yeah, this is all the cycle of life. It's all good. And all of this is reflected in earth-based spirituality. It's all part of our core principles. 
that we have cycles. We also find that it's really important for us to reflect and practice these principles. So walking in nature, going out into the forest and practicing this will help us relax, will help us reconnect with this cycle of energy, with this energetic web. So, <laughs> okay. Remember, the energetic web that we work with reminds us that everything is connected. The earth, humans, animals, plants, the elements, the seasons, everything is connected. And as earth-based spirituality, spiritualist, <laughs> we respect that. So you will find a lot more uh, spiritual tips, information, meditations, and so on and so forth at awakeningtulip.com. That's A W A K E N I N G Tulip T U L I P dot com. One word. It offers a lot, like I said earlier, a further guidance and resources to help you on your spiritual journey. So, <laughs> in this episode, in the first episode, we went over what earth based spirituality was from my point of view. Today, we went with the core principles of earth based spirituality the web of life, how everything is connected, every living thing is connected. The earth is a living creature. It is not just there for us. Part of our responsibility as earth-based spirituality spiritualist is a stewardship of the earth, of the animals, of ourselves, and of this energetic web. And next week, what I would like to do is help explain or identify maybe why earth-based spirituality it resonates with people who are seeking alignment so that's what we're going to take a look at next week i thank you for joining me today i am your host kimberly Coignier. i am a energetic practitioner and spiritual life coach at the awakening tool of llc and i'll see you next week thank you have a good day